Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. I'm also with uh, Carleton University Department of Geography and Environmental Studies. So what I really want to do in this video is give you the tools, give you some ideas and techniques and methods to evaluate your risk of, say, getting your house flooded out. You know, we've had huge amounts of rainfall, uh, both in many, many states in the U.S., especially in southern U.S., you know, roads being flooded out, um, whole areas, towns being flooded, you know, dams um, bursting, uh, earthen dams bursting, like there's just too much water. You know, there can be flooding from overland flooding if you're in a flat area. Um, there's just not enough, there's just too much runoff running over the land. Um, or you can be near a river and the river levels are rising or whatever. So I want to give you some basic tools to assess, you know, what your actual risk is. So the first um, thing in the toolbox here, if you like, is what is called the climo climograph. So I live in Ottawa. I'm going to talk about Ottawa, but you know, this could be, you can get all of this data for whatever city you happen to be in or whatever region you're in. You know, if you're out in a rural area, find the find some data that's the closest to you. So here we go. So this is a climograph. It looks a bit complicated, but it's actually quite simple. So what we do is it shows a lot of different things, but the key things are the precipitation and the temperatures. Precipitation is usually in a bar graph. Okay, you can get it in um, imperial units for the US or metric. This is metric in particular. So what we see is it always runs through the year by month to month. So January to December, and then the quantities are here. This is the rainfall is usually in a bar graph. So this is a rainfall. This is a normal um, yearly precipitation in Ottawa, and it's divided up into months. So to give you an idea, you know, Ottawa is approaching record high water levels. Um, in rivers and you know because we've just had so much rain you know we had the snow melt water soaks into the ground um, and uh, they're just the water to so the ground saturated the soils are saturated so we've had if you add January February March and April the rainfall amounts um, then basically we're that's added up to about what we've had since April 1st so we've had about the first four months of the year rainfall compressed into one month over 200 millimeters and therefore you know we're getting you know record high uh, river levels around ottawa you know lots of flooding so the big concern is the flooding from the rivers in our case um but you know you can look at the so these are the normals or the averages so what you can do is you can get the local numbers in your region and compare it to the averages. In, in Ottawa's case, where about the, the April rainfall is about three times the normal number. The other things that are on here that are key are the temperatures. So the red line is the daily maximum temperatures, and the um, blue here is the minimum is, is the minimum temperatures, and then the mean will be right in the middle. And there's other parameters like the number of wet days, wind speeds, et cetera, et cetera, stuff like that. But so the climograph is the key thing because it tells you how much rainfall is expected each month of the year and it gives you the temperature data. You know, so this is very useful. So it's an important tool. Um, now for Ottawa, okay, I just go, if I just Google, um, you know, if I just go back and Google, Environment Canada, Ottawa weather, okay? Um, then I get sort of, I get information here and it gives me the current conditions and you know, everybody's pretty familiar with doing this, I think. So in this case, you know, we've had over 200 millimeters of rain over the next three days. We're expecting perhaps up to 50 millimeters of rain. Um, so, the, so the rivers are still going up, et cetera. This doesn't look good because there's a lot of rain um, also going further out. Rainfall warnings in effect and stuff, so you can, so we have a situation here. So now we need to look at the, you know, there's, look at the rivers that are running through your region. So 
I just googled Ottawa River flows. It brings me to this regulation and planning site. So it has a map. So this is a watershed. So any water falling, any rainfall falling in this particular region is going to drain towards the rivers in this watershed and feed into the main rivers. Okay, so it this sort of it gives you an idea of the size of the watershed. Also, the uh, nature of the the, the rivers can local rivers could crest early when there's lots of snow melt and then the snow melt up here of course it takes longer for the plugs of water to come through here so you can get multiple peaks and rivers and things depending on the flow of course any rain if there's tremendous rainfall up here you won't have flooding down here right away there'll be a delay whereas if it's uh, so you can have really localized flooding from huge amounts of rainfall over a particular city or you can have, you know, rainfall in the distance and then it goes through the river system and cause ri causes river flooding. So here we are, there's some different locations. Um, this is the outflow in cubic meters per second at, you know, the bottom here. So all the stuff is accumulating, that number will be higher. Um, and it gives elevations here um, above water levels in meters. This would be meters above mean sea level. So it tells you the diff you can find out where you're closest to and see what the levels are. Um, you can go into the historical data and see what the historical levels are, see what the reservoirs are, and see what their capacity are. You know, so you can start sort of looking at this. So this is the daily outflows here. And for example, you know, in Britannia, you can see what the levels are here. This is in, in um, this is in uh, meters okay so you know he, so you can see how it's changing from day to day convert it to inches if you need to or if you're in the u.s these numbers will all be in metric um there's a couple other things here you know we can click on the forecast here so most regions will have you know there'll be stations where where these measurements are taken they give you a message here you know river still going up significant increases in levels because we're going to get rainfall over most of the basin, 25 to 50 millimeters. You know, it's pouring right now. Um, so then you can go here and you can look at the levels. So, you know, here's 60.11 meters above sea level. And it's climbing to 60.32. From the historical data, the highest ever at this station is 60.24. So we're going to exceed that definitely. Um, and you can see... Um, so this will be updated. In this case, it's every day. Um, if there's flooding conditions, it can be updated more often and so on. So this is a very useful tool. Um, and you can do this. There's also the Rideau River in Ottawa. So that's a different website. It tells you the Rideau River conditions and the flood warning. And you can get stream flows and water levels on the Rideau River. And that crests at different times. Um, okay, uh, let's see what we have here. It'll be a map, interactive map, you know, with different stations, and you can click on the station to see what the water flow is, and it shows the, uh, you know, the geometry of them, you know, the Rideau Valley. Uh, so this is a watershed, and the water that's collecting in here is feeding into this system. Okay, um, now some basic hydrology, okay? The water's conserved, it doesn't disappear right so you have to have a balance of water so what's coming in well you have precipitation coming in right what happens to the precipitation um, without vegetation it just goes on the ground <coughs> some of it will evaporate back up into the uh, atmosphere um, you have uh, infiltration which is so so the soil is composed of particles of different sizes the larger the particles the more gaps there are between the particles so that's the larger the pore space the more water can go into the ground depends on the thickness of the soils eventually the water will percolate down and reach the water table so the infiltrate you know if you've got dry soils and massive rainstorms a lot of the water will infiltrate in and it'll fill up all the pores until the water's ground is saturated no more water can go in the ground so in that case, the water, there's a lot more water running across the surface. So it runs across the surface, you know, it follows, uh, you know, the lowest points, 
A lot of it will end up in a local river or a creek, you know, feeding, you know, tributary and then feeding, uh, you know, a river, a creek, or and then going larger and larger um, rivers and so on. Okay, so, but the water doesn't disappear. So, so you have this basic situation here. So, uh, you know, when the ground is saturated and you get lots of rain, you get a lot more runoff, for example. Um, there's also, you know, trees, so the roots pick up some water, goes in, you know, uh, is vital for the growth of the tree, life of the tree, for photosynthesis. Also, there's stomata, stomata in the leaves, and some of the water will transpire and go back up into the atmosphere. Um, so this is, uh, there, you know, if you... So to find these, just Google Google images, you know, hydrology, go through, and this is a good sort of uh, schematic. Okay, I did the same thing. I just Googled Google images, and then I put water, water equations, hydrology equations. So here's a basic equation. Incoming water, precipitation, including snow, plus irrigation if that's being done. That's what's coming down. What's going up is evapotranspiration from the trees, infiltration into the soil, surface runoff. Delta S is the change of water storage. Okay, so there'll be more and more water stored in the soil or stored in ponds or whatever. Okay, so there has to be a balance of this. So obviously if, uh, you know, if the ground is saturated, infiltration will stop, right? And then there'll be a lot more water and all these other terms, including runoff, the river, the rivers will rise and so on. Okay, now of course we need the weather forecast because the amount of precipitation is key for what's going on. So I, uh, you know, I like weather underground, just Google Wonderground and you can get stuff where you can Google the government sites uh, with information. Um, this is a wonder map. If I just Google wonder map, then I can see, you know, this is a uh, real-time data. So put in your city, you can see an image, you know, uh, I selected the radar images, um, and you can see what's going on. So let's kind of zoom in here a little bit. So these are regions of more intense rainfall and so on here, you know, it's starting to pour here. Um, this is actually cycling through you know i play the movie and you can see the movement of the storm you know roughly how big it is you know that you know you know which way it's heading so you can get an idea you know we're going to get inundated now of course the ottawa watershed that i was showing you is up here so this will be more local rainfall you know this will raise the 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 rideau river it'll raise the ottawa river but if this was all over here and up over here you know, it could be even a bigger problem for flooding here. Of course, there's lots of flooding, you know, in Toronto. They're talking about evacuating Center Island. There's flooding in Hamilton. There's all kinds, you know, and of course, the flooding down in the U.S. is, is horrendous. Um, so another thing, so, you know, as a homeowner, you know, go out when it's pouring of rain and you have an umbrella, walk around the house, you know, see, you know, is, are the downspouts, um, are the east trough cleared out? Are the downspouts pointing well away from the house? Is the soil around the house sloped away from the house to bring the water away? Um, you know, if you're on a river and you can assess those values as going up, uh, go for the sandbags earlier than later. You know, if I lived along a river, I'd be tempted to put in sandbags and then just leave them there. Just cover them with sod and soil and stuff and just, you know, make them, have them as part of landscaping of your house. If you want to get more fancy, you can Google DEMs for your area. That's digital elevation models. So here we go. It's not Department of Emergency Medicine. Elevation data. So if we go for Ottawa, for example. So this is, uh, you know, we can get some really accurate information. Um, you can see what the, uh, what the uh, resolution is. So... Uh, you know, the resolution of an area. So that you basically you're looking at local peaks and valleys. You know, if your house is, th this will become very important for house prices soon. If your house is on a hill, it will command a higher price. If it's down in a valley within the city, um, it will, it will uh, eventually lose value because of these flooding. So th there's all kinds of techniques that you can use to assess the risk. So just start looking at some of these things and, uh, you know, you can really, um, you know, the more you know about it, 
the more you can prepare to avoid, uh, you know, to mitigate the risk of your particular, the places that you particularly live. Okay, so thanks. I hope this helped a bit. So get to it. Thanks.